if you watched the uh, overview, then you saw that Colorista 2 features a pop control, which can be used to add local contrast and make a shot, uh, you know, enhance the detail of a shot. Um, and there's an interesting side use of pop, which I think is going to be very popular, which is that you can use it in the negative direction as well. So here we have a uh, shot from the that uh, Eric Escobar shot, and uh, it's an older actress, and I think she looks great, but the truth is that uh, depending on you know what the intention of the material is uh, everybody could use a little help in the cosmetic department we put makeup on actors we want them looking their best and every once in a while you wind up with a shot of someone that could just use a little bit of uh, nip and tuck so uh, without saying that that's the case here I'm just going to use this as a sample um, so what you'll see is I turn negative pop you know I just start sliding pop in the negative direction is that without um, obliterating important detail in the shot or without really applying an overall diffusion kind of look I've just softened up some of the finer details in her skin tone so I'll turn the effect off and on off and on and the truth is that alone would probably be useful but where pop is extremely handy is when it's used in conjunction with the keyer, and that is why it is located in the secondary uh, stage of Colorista 2. So again, turning the effect off for a second, you can see that it's affecting the background, it's affecting her hair, and these things are probably fine, but if we can hold on to some sharp detail in things like her eyes and her hair and soften her face a little bit, then the effect becomes a little less obvious. It looks a little bit less like an overall filter on the lens, and it looks a little bit more like we just took a couple years off our actress. So I'm going to hop into the keyer, and I'm just going to start marquee selecting areas on her face until I get a good initial selection. It's really pretty easy to get a good starting place with her. That's pretty awesome. So let's just zoom in. Let's just see. Here's what I don't like. I don't like this noise on her neck. So I'm going to try to fill that in. And I don't like this area on her nose. So I'm going to fill that in. And maybe I'll just get a little bit more of the shadow area. But what I'm trying to do is keep it off her hair. So I'm going to minus through her hair just a little bit. And that is going to introduce some noise. At some point I'm going to stop fighting that back and forth and I'm just going to realize that her hair and her neck have some similar colors in them and I'm going to fight that more with softness so I'm going to soften this effect out choke it in a little bit and what that does is it gets rid of all that funky fringy detail now the nice thing about this is you do not have to be very precise about it um, so uh, don't spend a lot of time on this before you just try out the effect and see how it works. So here it is. Now we've got uh, pop set to negative 50, and it's only affecting her skin. And some great advice from a really uh, talented cinematographer who was telling me about some tricks that he's done to make actresses look their best. Um, do this very subtly. Um, don't go full crazy with it. Um, if you set this to negative 100, you know, the effect is pretty obvious. And what will happen is people will know that you're doing it and it won't work, you know. But if you just do a little bit of it, negative 15, negative 30 at the most maybe, you know, then you get away with it. And the effect is subtle enough and it's easy enough to save this as a preset and apply it to a bunch of shots that, uh, you know, you just kind of get happy actors, happy audience, and uh, nobody's aware that, that anyone's fooling with them. Now, uh, the truth is, there are times where you need to just go crazy with it. Um, this is an interesting example here. This is, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how this came to be released, but these are unretouched photos of Madonna, who looks great for her age, but is uh, maybe not acting her age by dressing in little bunny ears and showing off this latest uh, bag from Louis Vuitton. So... Let's see what we can do for Madonna here. Um, I'm just going to hop right into the keyer. Just throw, turn primary away here. We don't need it. We're just going to go right into the keyer and just start grabbing skin. Now look at all these squares. What you're seeing here, I grabbed this image off the web. I don't know where it came from. It's heavily compressed. 
So, you know, this is not going to be so easy to get a decent key off of this material, and yet I'm very quickly able to just scrub in the areas that I want, and I will soften up my selection just enough to kind of get rid of that noise, but this is going to do it for me. Okay, so there's uh, selection for Madonna. Now let's do negative pop. We're going to go a little stronger with that effect here, so we're going to do that. Now the other thing I'm going to do is if if we can handle it, I'm going to lift the mids a little bit. It's just going to glow her a little bit and warm them a little bit. Everyone looks a little bit better with a little fake tan. So warming her mids, maybe warm the highlights a little bit. There we go. So now she's got some color back in her. Okay, so here's Madonna before and here's Madonna after. Um, the other thing I want to just let you know is that this isn't, you know, this is a touchy issue, but I wanted to show you this example. Here's a beautiful young model getting her makeup done in Tokyo. Uh, she's absolutely stunning. She's young. Uh, she looks terrific. But color correction in this day and age is tradition, you know, has, has gotten pretty aggressive. We really, we, you know, we increase contrast a lot. We tend to we tend to really, you know, kind of push the image around a lot. Um, when we do things like, for instance, the uh, traditional kind of uh, cool shadows, warm highlights kind of look, we are, you know, messing around with the color space a little bit. And we're, we're definitely being very aggressive about, uh, you know, possibly impacting the way uh, skin tones are rendered. Um, and if you want to hold on to your skin tones, uh, I'm just going to lift kind of the mids overall, and then what I'm going to do here is go into secondary, do a little power mask for her, just her face, because we're in an uncontrolled environment here, and I would like to just darken that background a little bit. Um, not so much that we notice, but... Uh, Okay, and then let's go back to primary and just do a little overall exposure up here. Okay. Okay, so again, she looks absolutely fantastic. And I've already spent my secondary on this vignette. Here's before, here's after. But I am just going to do a little tiny uh, tweak to her skin. Nothing much. But uh, let's go into secondary. Sometimes it's helpful to label these. I'm going to call the first one skin and the second one look. Um, so go in there and do a selection on her. Plus it out. Notice it's not grabbing her eyes or her lips. I'm actually really happy about that. I don't, I'd like to keep her eyes and her lips really sharp. So, and I don't really care that it's grabbing this um, color in the background here because to take pop out of that isn't going to hurt anything. Um, so, and now let's just, let's just set her to negative 20. And, you know, the effect is so subtle that you could certainly get away with not doing it, but it's so easy to do. And it just kind of just takes some of the curse that this high contrast uh, correction that I did brought onto it. So even though she's got pretty much, as far as I can tell, perfect skin, uh, it just helps a little bit just to soften her up. It just emphasizes uh, the soft beauty of her skin against the kind of cool industrial uh, uh, urban environment of Tokyo in the background. So here's uh, before and here's after with that shot. So that's a little overview of how you can use negative pop in conjunction with the Kier as a quick and easy uh, cosmetic touch-up tool.